Today I have a rather interesting hardware combination. This is an Intel server board, okay, and this particular one is the S1200KP, and then I also have a matching Intel Xeon processor. So this is an E31260L. So that's a 2.4 gigahertz Xeon chip, and what this is meant for is low power, low heat output, applications where you need server reliability. So it's no secret that Intel makes motherboards. I mean, it's not something that I've really done too much of on my particular channel, but they do make motherboards. It's also no secret that Intel makes some of the most reliable motherboards out there. So if you were going to build something like a very small form factor uh, server machine, whether it's for home use or SMB use, you're going to throw it in a closet somewhere and basically forget about it. I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to use a configuration like this. Another possible application based on the motherboard itself, which I'll actually here, I'll get into that in a minute, let's look at the accessories, would be something like a, uh, a like a NAS or a storage server. If you don't want to use a pre-box solution, you want to use a custom software or something like that, you could use a product like this. So in terms of included accessories, there's not a whole lot. There's an IO shield, there are two SATA cables, although I gotta say they feel pretty darn high quality for uh, included SATA cables, nice. We've got a little diagram of all the stuff on the board, which you don't need because I'm about to tell you all the stuff on the board. Uh, we've got Intel enabled acceleration, server acceleration alliance. Okay, sure. We've got the Intel server board quick reference, which shows you how to install your stuff on the thing. And finally, we have a driver disk, which you shouldn't use. You should download the latest off the Intel website. So now let's have a look at the board itself. LGA 1155 socket, so you're going to want to use a Xeon on this particular board, um, which is not really that different from a desktop uh, Core i5 or Core i7 processor, other than the additional validation that a Xeon chip goes through. So you, when you buy server grade components, you're paying for reliability, so that's what it brings to the table. So you've got your Xeon socket here, you've got a PCIe 16x slot here, which means you can use this for almost any number of things, because that 16x slot gives you the potential to put a RAID card in here, it gives you the potential to put a very advanced network card in here, or whatever else that you would want to do. In terms of included RAM support, we've got dual DDR3 DIMM slots, so those are supporting dual channel memory, and you can put up to 16 gigs in here, so that's not bad considering the ITX form factor. We've got a 24 pin power as well as a 4 pin power for the CPU directly. You can see the CPU VRM circuitry is right here, as well as the CPU fan header and an, oh, sorry, CPU fan header and an additional fan header. We've also got, um, Sorry, we've got four SATA ports, so two of them are SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, and two of them are SATA 2 3 gigabit per second. We've got front USB right here, so that's USB 2, and then we've got our front panel connectors over here, so everything's all laid out in a pretty straightforward fashion. I would definitely recommend using an air cooling solution on this board that has a downdraft cooler, so that you make sure you're cooling these VRM components. You can see what Intel's done is they've actually stood these components up with metal sinks on them in order to make sure that they get adequate cooling as opposed to laying them down directly on top of the motherboard. So that has allowed them, as long as you have decent airflow around them, to adequately cool the VRM without installing an additional heatsink on it. So here we've got the chipset uh, heatsink, and then on the back we see the I.O. This is a server board, so it's pretty basic. We've got four USB 2 ports, two gigabit Ethernet ports, and one DVI port. Remember, this chip does have onboard video, HD 2000 graphics, so you're not going to need uh, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that'll power the DVI port. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Intel S1200KP server motherboard, the ITX server motherboard, and I'll actually be looking at using this in an upcoming NCIX Tech Tips. We're going to have a look at Windows Home Server with a fractal design define, or sorry, not define, array case. So that supports up to six hard drives, which means we're going to need a storage controller to go with it. And we'll be using the Xeon E31260L in addition to that in order to power it. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.